Hey guys, how you doing? Now, I'm coming with another video. Um, now, there was supposed to be a uh, new podcast coming out on Saturday. Unfortunately, that's not going to be happening purely because of the fact that um, everything went wrong. Like, every single stage went wrong. Uh, massive problems with computer, uh, for editing, and problems with the camera. So, those, the podcast isn't going to happen this week. Um, not that... You know, not as not as a big thing. Uh, but I thought I'd do a video today eh, on a certain George Santos. Now we've all adjusted our CV in a positive fashion. We've all done that, right? We've all made ourselves look better. But this is when it gets to be a bit too much. But anyway, more that in a bit. Yes, the yes, the candidate of the tough on crime Republican Party allegedly saw a checkbook in Brazil in a case that was closed in two thousand eight because they couldn't find him, and which has now been reopened, opening the possibility of him being extradited uh, back to Brazil. So there's that. Um, other things, but other than that, and obviously the the potential. Um, yeah, there was a potential. Didn't try that. So I'm going to start with education. I've split this up into categories because there's so many, so easier to do. But education. First, he said that he went to Baruch College, uh, and that he went there on a volleyball scholarship, uh, became a state champion in volleyball at Baruch College. Now, Baruch College, for anyone who doesn't know, is a college in New York City. That's also addressed to you, George. And that's addressed to George Towns as well, because, according to them, he's never been to the place. But he said that he graduated in top 1% of his class with a 3.8 GPA, uh, which is, like, a first for British viewers. Um, and in the course of his volleyball prowess, he somehow managed to get so injured that he needed two knees. Now, my granddad also has had a double knee replacement, and that took him 40 years of running. So, oh, and 20 years of rugby, and nearly 10 years of boxing. So, you know, it's quite difficult to break down your knees. Apparently, he managed it in four years in a volleyball scholarship. I say four years because, I mean, look at him. He's clearly not been working out recently. Right? He then said that he's got that he's got an MBA, so that's a master's degree, at New York University, one of the most pre uh, prestigious universities in the US. Which is just, uh, in fact, there's no record of him ever graduating any college. And he said that he went to an elite New York City prep school, although I couldn't find which one or any record of him actually going to any of them. But, yeah, that's education. None of which, none of the things that he said about his education are actually verifiable. Just to reiterate that point. Probably all lies. Anyway, let's talk his employment history. Now he claims that now he asked when he got to the got to committee assignments, he asked to be placed on the financial committee. And you probably think, okay, well, what's his expertise in, in finance? Well, according to him. That expertise was gained from working at Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, two of the biggest banks in the world. And they're so big that they didn't bother writing down the fact that he worked there. He also said they worked for a very successful family business. No records exist. And in 2019, he claimed to he claimed to have earned $54,000. And somehow, two years later, he launched his campaign, $700,000. And he managed to do that whilst only earning $750,000. Which is either, hmm, he's screwing up his taxes, or he's got that money from somewhere else. Both of which are being investigated by the House Ethics Committee. But, yeah, his employment, uh, here's the stuff that we do know. He did work for a... 
um, your company. Uh, the name will come up on here. That yep, he worked for that company. A company that has been described by the Securities and Exchange Commission as a Ponzi scheme. Right, there are multiple videos on YouTube about what a Ponzi scheme is, but basically it's paying off early investors with new investors' money. Right, it can only last so long because you eventually you run out of people to sucker into it. He worked for one of those, made lots of money, boasts about it as well. Uh, so that's one that we're doing now. And right, and just for just for fun, he also was a drag queen. Uh, which, you know, nothing wrong with that, but he denied it. And that's an interesting thing that's true about him. Like, uh, why would you deny such a thing? And he did that in Brazil. A place that is currently wanting to speak to him quite urgently. As we'll see in our next segment. So, yeah, that's what we're discussing today is the legendary George Santos. But before we get into that, uh, don't forget to like the video, um, subscribe if you want, and leave a comment um, with your most, I, I was going to say most ludicrous thing um, that you think George Santos could have done. But, I mean, there's some stuff in here that, frankly, good luck to you if you meet that. And now we turn to a rap sheet longer than quite a lot of people. First, is he allegedly sold a checkbook in Brazil, a crime for which the Brazilian authorities are still hunting him, and a case that was closed in 2008 on account of him not being found. Uh, if Brazil's still looking, he's at the US Congress, so it's on top of a massive hill in Washington DC, really easy to spot, he's in there. And the officers are just to the right, um, or left. Just, just check them, right, he's there. But another, uh, crime is, of course, the uh, suspected uh, campaign finance violations, which basically, how did he get 700 grand to be able to launch his campaign? And, lastly, the fact that he raised free, allegedly raised free grand for a homeless veterans' dogs veterinary bill, and then kept it. Um, veterans furious, George denying it, and um, besides, nobody is believing the denials. So that's his. That's the crimes that he is accused of committing. Here are the crimes that he think that he has said he has been a victim of. First, that he was mugged on Fifth Avenue in summer of 2021. Uh, he alleged that he was mugged, that they took his phone, his shoes, and his briefcase. Now, I've been to New York. I can believe that someone would relieve somebody of a briefcase and a phone. I can believe that. I find it difficult to believe that someone stole his shoes. That one seems weird. Um, especially on 5th Avenue and 55th, which is near, which by the way, is near Trump Tower. Maybe. Don't know if there's a connection. Maybe. But, the, he alleged that. Um, by the way, NYPD were asked and they have no record of such an event, which means either it didn't happen or it didn't report it. In which case, it's either a liar or an idiot, right? You know, if you're a victim of, of a serious crime, like having I mean, your shoes nicked off you, yeah, you're probably going to be reporting that to the police, right? Also, a slightly more serious uh, crime that he alleged to have been a victim of was an assassination attempt. Again, no evidence of this has been found. It's very difficult. Uh, very much something that, if it were true, would be investigated and would have been found out and would have been major news um, but he alleged that he was a victim of a assassination attempt again can't be verified and no one believes them and NBC News 4 in New York asked people and they didn't believe them and now and just a word on uh, charities he alleged that he had a non-profit uh, he said that he had a non-profit animal charity. Um, the IRS aren't aware of him ever registering as such. Um, but, you know, if he did, if he says he did, but he actually didn't, or he didn't hand off the profits, another serious crime. And finally, his family. Yep, 
yeah, this is the stuff that is going to really annoy any European viewers, especially any, any German or Jewish viewers, because he claimed that he was a proud Jew. He's not. He's Catholic. He claimed that his mum was born in Belgium, and his grandparents were born in Ukraine. They weren't. They were all born in Brazil. He claimed that his grandparents escaped the Holocaust. They didn't. They were born in Brazil. Nothing to do with the Holocaust. He uh, claimed that his mum was the was in the was in the Twin Towers on 9-11. She wasn't. She was in Brazil. He claimed that his mum was the first female executive of a major financial institution. Didn't specify which one, and neither did the Huffington Post. But apparently that's something that his mum uh, did. Got him. She didn't. She was a house cleaner in Manhattan. Um, also claimed that his family had a real estate fortune. Well, that can't be true because he said that he grew up in abject poverty. You can't have both. And also he was born in 1988. And he said that his family lost the money in 2008, which would make him 20. Now, I don't know about you, I'm 20. And I consider myself grown up. Many will disagree with that assertion, but I definitely wouldn't say that I'm growing up in abject poverty now because I've done the growing up. I didn't then either. But that's the sort of thing that he has. So that's just a quick summary of the lies that we know of as of January 24th, 2022. Uh, sorry, 2023. And so I want to leave, I want to deliver this back to you. What do you think about this? Right, I, I would be keen to know your comments. So please um, leave them in the comments below. Alternatively, think up another lunatic thing that he could have said and whack that in the comments and, I'll, and I will feature the funniest one in the next video. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more, um, my face will appear somewhere around about now. It uh, will, will have appeared about a minute, about 10 seconds ago. And there's another video here for you to watch. But until next time, tell the truth. And say